Hi, welcome to this DCP web tutorial. This is the final bookkeeping, VAT bookkeeping tutorial. Um, this is part three and in this tutorial we're going to create an expenditure tracking document to keep track of all of the bills and all of the costs in your business. So before we do that, let's have a quick recap of what we did before. So we created this folder. This is the new document that we're going to work on in a moment. So you can ignore this for the minute. But previously we created an invoice tracker. We'll just quickly open this and have a look. So in this invoice tracker, we was able to keep basically keep track of all the invoices that we sent to our client, uh, to our clients, and all the ones in green are the ones that have been paid, and the ones in blue are more recent ones that you sent out, and these ones haven't been paid. So if you want to go back and recap that first tutorial, you'll get a better understanding of this spreadsheet. But using this spreadsheet, we created a next document, which was the actual invoice template here. And this invoice template was replicated many, many times. I'll just put a temporary logo, just a sample logo and some text in here. But we basically took the information from this spreadsheet and we created a real invoice, which we could send to our customers as a PDF file. So this was to keep track of all of the invoices. This is like a holistic view, you could say, a, a big overview. And then for each line in here, we would have created a separate invoice. And you can see that we started to do that job here. You can see the different invoices that we're creating. And we created, all we basically did was take this original invoice template and copy it and just rename it and reuse it and keep reusing it for every single invoice that we generate. And in the end, we'll have a PDF file that we can send directly to our customer. So you can go back and recap on those two tutorials, but today we're going to focus on this expenditure tutorial. So I'm just going to double click on this. It's a blank document. You want to open up a blank spreadsheet on your computer. So open up a blank Office, Open Office Calc spreadsheet and just go to File, Save As, and you can call it Expenditure Tracker and give it today's date. So I've just done that now. This is just a blank document. So I'm just going to save this. And really, before we start putting information to this spreadsheet, let's just try and think what our objectives are. So, you know, realistically, what we want to do here is keep track of all of the payments that we're making to the service providers, to our customers, uh, to, to anyone in, in, in our business who we're going to be paying. Um, you could be going down to the shop and simply buying printer ink or you could be paying your staff or you could be paying for your internet access or your telephone. All different types of payments will be listed in here. This will be our expenditure, what we're spending. So in this first cell here, we want to put in here invoice date. Invoice slash, uh, really it should be invoice slash receipt date because we're going to have two types of um, payment well, we're going to pay in two different ways we either pay via invoice or we pay and then we'll get a till receipt so if we go to the shop and buy something they'll give us a till receipt but if we order something online say from Amazon or somewhere then we'll get an invoice so in here we want date paid and then we want a description we want to know which company we're paying and we also want um, The X VAT price, the VAT amount, and the including VAT price. So we want three different values in here. So these first two, I'm going to click on the A and the B, and just hold my mouse down to highlight both these columns. Right-click on them and format them into a date type here. I'm just going to use that particular format. You can select another one. I use this particular format and change the option in here if you're using a different type of date system but I'm using UK date system and then I'm going to highlight these three holding down my left mouse button highlight these three columns I'm going to right click 
format cell and I'm going to set it to a currency and I'm using British pounds but you can select a different currency I'm using British pounds and click OK and I'm going to click on this number one and I'm going to make them bold and you just distinguish these as titles so let's just make some scenarios so let's check today's date is the 4th of the 6th so on the 4th today of the 6th 2015 let's just do let's just make sure we get that right so let's just click on this this little blank left square in the top here and let's left align everything so everything will be left aligned it just makes life a little bit easier so on the 4th of the 6th let's just say I was I went to do some went to buy something for my business and we happened to buy um, some printer ink and I went to the shop and bought this I didn't order it online I went to the shop and bought it so I'll, really the dates will be the same the date that I got the receipt and the date that I paid will be the same because I bought it directly in the shop and really there's one other thing missing here um, I'm going to right click and insert so I'm going to click on this letter C here I'm going to right click and insert column because we've got uh, to put in the payment method here and I paid using cash and description of the product I purchased was printer ink and the company was um, PC world for example and the price so in here when you get the receipt you should have the VAT amount so the, how much VAT you paid on that particular product um, so you don't really need formulas in here because when you receive your invoice or your receipt it will have the VAT amount on there so this is something that you you don't really need to calculate yourself this will already be documented on the receipt or the invoice itself so we're gonna say we spent 100 pounds and 20 pounds was VAT and the including VAT price was 120 in total so that would be correct um, the correct pricing there so we'll go down one more call, one more and it's the following day we went to the shops we went to the post office and we paid cash again and we bought some um, postage stamps from the post office and um, in some cases the products that you purchase may not have VAT on them so in this case um, in the XVAT column I'm going to put in £8 and in the VAT 0 and in the including VAT 0 because on this particular product there was no VAT so we just have the X VAT price here there is no VAT on this particular product so we can just continuously fill out this spreadsheet we can do some more examples so on the same day I'm going to, this date price, this date here I'm going to leave this for a second and I'm going to put in here um, credit card And um, so we bought a laptop, excluding that it was a thousand pounds. The VAT will be two hundred, and the total will be twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. So the reason why I've left this blank, um, what I've noticed that like, it may not be applicable to your business, but sometimes when I um, make a payment using my credit card so let's say on this particular date this is the date the invoice came in normally what I would do is I would copy this and put it here because I would assume that the credit card payment went out on the same day but that's not always the case sometimes if you buy a product in a certain point of the day let's say after six or seven in the in the evening sometime like that the, the actual payment that came out on the credit card will be on the following day so normally I'll put today's date in here but then at the end of the month or whenever I'm going to do my VAT return I go back and I look at my credit card statement and sometimes it will show that the payment came out the following day it didn't come out on the same day so you need to be aware of that and make sure that's accurate 
Um, but normally I just cut and paste these across and then I'll check it on my credit card statement. Cash payments are pretty straightforward, you're going to pay on the same day. But credit cards you need to be a bit more careful because sometimes the payments come out on the following day. So in here, um, let's put one more example. So in this example here, um, we did a PayPal payment. And I've also noticed that PayPal payments, if they do a direct debit from your account, so if you're not paying with with funds already in your PayPal account, you're paying using direct debit from your business account, that PayPal payment normally comes out a few days later. It can even be three or four days later, so the eighth, ninth. It may come out sometime on your statement, on your actual bank, bank statement, you'll see that it came out three or four days later. Although they accepted the payment straight away, the funds don't get transferred until three or four days later. So you need to be aware of that as well. That's for PayPal. So these are really the different methods of payment. Um, you will have one other example. So we'll just do one more example. And with the check payments, uh, whenever I do a check payment, I always put the reference um, of the check number so normally it's a set of digits it will be a set of unique digits to reference that individual check that's quite important you should always put the check uh, number here as well so that if later when you need to look back you can find that check number on your bank statement we'll also have that check number as well so that's quite important and for this um, let's just say we bought So we paid another company to do some content writing for us, let's say. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So in here, this is the company name, and we paid them £100. They charged us £20 VAT, and the total was 120 And because this is a check payment, when you pay them the check on the 10th or the 8th, it will normally take about five working days for that check to clear. So you'd expect to see that on your bank statement five to seven working days later. So you can see as we're filling in this spreadsheet, I'm just gonna do one quick thing here. I'm just gonna select all of this data here and copy and paste it down because I just wanna show a bit more information in here. I'm just gonna generate some dates. I'm just making this up at the moment, but I just wanna show a bit more information in here. And as you're going along, you're gonna keep adding in all of your data. You can have all your VAT figures here as well. Uh, you can do your grand totals, just like in the other spreadsheet. But we can also select this first row here. We can go to data, filter, and then auto filter. And we can go and see how much cash did we spend in a certain period. You can see it's highlighted blue here, the arrow. That just tells us it's currently active, this particular this particular filter. You see how much credit card payments you've done. You can see you spent 3,000 or 3,600, including VAT. So it's quite a useful filtering system to see what payments you've made and when you've made them and what type of payment it was and who it's gone to. And you can also filter out and see how much did you pay spend on Amazon, for example, or how much did you spend on content writing. So this is quite a good uh, system to document your expenditure, what you're spending. And it's worth knowing that in a spreadsheet like this because at the end of every three months or the end of the month, let's say this was one month's data, you can quite easily do a sum tool here and you can see how much you spent. So here you can see how much you've spent, including VAT. You spent £4,329 and 732 of that was the actual VAT amount and the excluding VAT price here. So you can see that information here. 
normally when I do these sum tools here, after I've got the information that I need, I will delete them because I want to I want to continue filling in my data afterwards as well. So I can just delete them. So I'm not going to really drag this tutorial out. It is quite simple. You just want to keep documentation of all your information, and you know if you're if you're if you're going to be doing your first VAT return, what I would typically do, I'm going to close this for the moment, is I'll keep all this documentation. So I'll keep my invoice tracker, my expenditure, what am I spending, and I'll keep these documents and I'll keep them up to date. And then you should probably go and sit down with your accountant with this information and he'll, he or she will help you do your first VAT return so you get a good understanding. But without this documentation, you're just going to end up turning up with loads of paperwork and it will be very, very... Um, time consuming to do this job whereas in this spreadsheet for example here if you were to say how much uh, did you generate in this period how much has actually been paid to you you can just go to the paid column and set it to yes and you could work out quite easily how much did you get paid including that how much VAT have you actually generated on those invoices and how much was it excluding that so within you know, three mass clicks, you can work out how much you've generated in that period. That's very useful for you and for your accountant because your accountant can now not spend hours trying to document all of this for you. You've done it for him. So you're doing quite a big job here and it's worth having this because it's, it's good for your business. You understand what's going on. Of course, there's software out there that will do this for you. But with these simple spreadsheets, you know, you've only got two spreadsheets here, really. Um, you can keep a track of that. So this will be your incoming and this will be your outgoing. Very simple. So I hope that all makes sense. If you've got any problems, feel free to give me a, a little message on um, YouTube commenting and I'll try and help you along the way. But that concludes this VAT bookkeeping tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.